Was Fiorentina Lazio the worst match of the year from Lazio? Is the Champions League race over now for Simone Inzaghi's team? And with Salernitana reaching the Serie A, what will change or not change for Lazio? And would Jerry Mancini be a better owner than Claudio Lotito? This is Lazio Lounge, your podcast about Lazio in English. I'm Vittorio Campanile and with me there is Alistair McKenzie. Alistair, worst match of 2021 for Lazio against Fiorentina? Do you agree with me? Hmm. Of 2021. Um, I'm trying to rake my memory back through <laughs> to find the, find the painful moments. I think the Bologna game was pretty bad as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then obviously the first leg against Bayern Munich wasn't exactly fun for us. But yeah, I mean, it's, I guess in context, you're right, because it's it's kind of what we were saying after the Milan game. Like, it's all very well smashing Milan 3 0 and playing one of your best games, but it doesn't really mean much if you can't follow that up by winning the games you should be winning against teams lower down the league. And as a result, you know, going up to Florence to play a Fiorentina team who've not been in great form and losing like that. Well, I think it means Lazio are out of the Champions League race and um, it's a disappointing way to go. Yeah, one thing I was thinking about is Fiorentina, every time they're playing against Lazio, it, it feels like it's the Champions League final for them. They always, they always try their best. Uh, it's true that in the recent past, Lazio won often against them, even though I, st- I, I can recall a lot of matches where they really tried the best and gave everything to win. So, but to be honest, Alistair, as some of our listeners uh, tweeted uh, in this weekend, it looked like, especially in the second half, that Fiorentina was fighting for the Champions League and Lazio was the team that was uh, pretty much safe. Yeah, I think that's fair. And it's, it's kind of, it's hard to find any kind of excuse or reason for it, isn't it? Because... Lazio had a full week to prepare for this game. They didn't have any particular injury problems. They're able to put out a full-strength team. They've just won two games in a row, so the form and the confidence should be pretty good. And like you say, it's Fiorentina is an awkward opponent, but a team that Lazio have done pretty well against in recent years. And so I guess it just continues this thing, this on, ongoing theme throughout the whole season where just Lazio haven't been very convincing. <laughs> And even when, as we've been saying all this time, when they've been going on this winning run, it's not always been because they've been playing amazing football. It's just that they're finding ways kind of thing. And in this, on, on this occasion, they, they couldn't find a way. And it almost feels like a result like this has kind of been coming. Um, but it's just it's really deflating uh, for it to happen now. With three games left, and especially, you know, a home game against Parma coming up next is as, as much of a gimme as you're going to get at this stage yeah. of the season. So even taking a point from that game, you know, would have at least kind of kept some sort of momentum alive. And I just think now it's there's too much to do and uh, we're probably going to have to settle for another year of travelling to Cluj and uh, Grasshoppers or whatever the hell we end up. Well, it's not official. We have to beat Parma to be sure about that. But uh, Inzaghi said we had a big chance uh, at the beginning with Correa. Scoring that would have changed the match. Yes, I agree. And it was another uh, mistake from, uh, from Correa. But if you're a big team fighting for the Champions League, you cannot just say, hey, we had a chance at the beginning, we didn't score, and then, you know, things happen. I mean, I, I can accept it from, uh, uh, I don't know, a middle team uh a middle-level team, but not for one fighting for the Champions League, right? Well, I guess it's the the alternative to the... I can't remember Strakosha making a save. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's not line. playing. How can he make them? Well, he could could have said it in that case. I don't think any of us can remember the last time Strakosha made a save. Um, yeah, I know, exactly. And and the thing is, yes, Korea had that chance and Dragovski made the save, but... Not that long before then, they'd left Bonaventura completely unmarked yeah. in the box and he headed wide. And that was a huge 
as big a chance for Fiorentina. I just felt like there was, well, in a couple in a couple of regards in this match, I just felt like they were really disorganized, and that was the thing that almost frustrated me the most. Was defensively, I felt like they were being pulled apart and not communicating properly and ending up in bad positions. And then at the end of the match, so during the match, the defensive thing was frustrating organization-wise. At the end of the match, when it just came to needing the goal, it just turned into this kind of, we've talked about it before, this this plan B of utter chaos, where he's just kind of throwing players on the pitch and there's no particular shape or structure and you're trying to work out what formation lats were playing and it, uh, the players look like they're also trying to work out what formation that's your play and uh, it just felt like it was too too much confusion too much disorganization in both senses you know in in the way they were defending during the game and in the way they chased the game I, I thought I thought it was really annoying the fact that beginning of second half Lazio start playing this long ball hoping that Chile Mobile could uh, surprise Fiorentina defense on the back end in front of Dragoski, but if you play the long ball from your defenders, then it's going to be really complicated for Chiron Mobile or Correa to control that ball because it's like 40, 50 meters of, of a, a kick. So, and I thought, Alizo, it was far too early to start panicking like that instead of trying the ball, trying to play your type of football. Um, I don't know if it was. Um, Feeling too much pressure, they need they, they knew they needed to win that match, or maybe as Inzaghi said, a couple of players weren't fit. Luis Alberto had a little problem. We know Milinko Savic broke his nose, etc. But yeah, I, I cannot see a big team going panic mode so soon. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, yeah, like I said, it just felt all a bit chaotic, a bit disorganized, disjointed. I almost felt like they were they were kind of caught out by the fact that Fiorentina almost mm. played played Lazio at their own game quite effectively, especially in the early stages of the match. They they did what Lazio liked to do and basically left Lazio to have the ball, sat deep, played it out from the back, created the spaces and hit the spaces and caused a bit of defensive chaos, a few kind of two v twos, three v threes, that kind of thing. And they were they were kind of playing, yeah, kind of playing Lazio football against Lazio in a way. Yeah, but it, 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 it was Yakini, not Sarri. We know how Yakini play, right? He's a <laughs> defender mind of manager, right? He's he, if if he could, he would play with two goalkeepers. So you know, Inzaghi shouldn't be surprised to see Fiorentina playing like that. I mean, it would be different if it was Sarri, but that's Yakini type of football. So. I don't know. I don't know if Inzaghi was surprised to see our key players performing so bad because Correa, after performing so well and scoring so often, did pretty much nothing against Fiorentina. Luis Alberto as well. Uh, Ciro Mobile tried, but I don't think he had more than two chances. So maybe that created the, pr the pressure. Yeah, and it's so hard to put your finger on what's going on with this team because yeah. we've just had, I, I, you know, one of the questions I remember we had last week was about how come this team who basically were struggling so much to score goals not that long ago is suddenly they're coming from everywhere. I mean, looking at it, five against Benevento, two against Napoli, three against Milan, four against Genoa, and then nothing against Fiorentina. And with the full strength team available with Milinkovic Savic, with Alberto, with Correa Immobile, and all of those guys in great form. I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. And it's no. not a fitness thing. It's not a tiredness thing because they've had the full week. And it's, I don't know, it's it's strange. It almost, uh, it's almost impossible to put a finger on exactly how this ended up happening. Um, and then the substitution, Alistair. Uh, it looks like Lazari had fever uh, the, the night before. But you take off. Lazzari, uh, Luis Alberto, etc. And you put Pereira left back on the wing. I mean, <laughs> why? Uh, especially looking how Correa was playing. Why didn't you put someone else there instead of Correa? You could see that it wasn't the day for Tuco Correa, right? No, and, and looking at this now, Fiorentina hadn't kept a clean sheet 
since the 19th of February, which is oh, 11 matches they hadn't <laughs> kept a clean sheet in before this. The week before, they conceded three against Bologna. I mean, Bologna. How, how, did, that, how did we not score a goal? Yeah, I mean, not even that close. I mean, there weren't that many great chances for Lazio. It's no, not even that Dragovski had an amazing game or anything like that. In the second half, that's the thing most annoying. In the second half, Lazio was in panic mode, but didn't create nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. It looks like Fiorentina was up, absolutely in control and then scored the second goal and finished the game. So, I don't know. There's, something must happen in the in the locker room. I don't know what if players were more injured than we know or there has been a fight, something like that. But, yeah, it, it, after seeing Lazio playing against AC Milan in Genoa, we, we never saw it coming. Yeah, now there's, I mean, we've, we've rightly praised the, the winning run that Lazio have been on at, uh, at the Olympico. But conversely, it's kind of almost the opposite now yeah. um, away form. You know, it's, it is a bit worrying when you look back over the last few months and see, you know, defeat to Inter, defeat to Bologna, defeat to Juve, uh, beat Udinese in Verona, but then you've got defeat to Napoli, defeat to Fiorentina. And that's pretty bad run. I know some of those are difficult games, but you would expect more than six points from, from that run of the fixtures. Yeah. Um, do you think the race for the Champions League is over, especially after AC Milan have beaten Juventus? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, the gap is gap to the top four is now at six points, and Lazio. Okay, say you you give Lazio a win, which I don't think is a given, but say you do for the game in hand, and it's at three points. You're still relying on on favors, I guess. Um, and obviously, we need, then would need to work out things like head-to-head and so on. Because if you if you manage to finish level with Napoli, um, uh, for example, it would come down to the head-to-head record, which uh, Lazio would get knocked out of again, um, as we did with Inter a few years ago in the game we shall not talk about. So, um, yeah, that, that's that's a bit frustrating as well. It's, it's basically with Napoli being in, in fourth place at the moment, it's, it's essentially four points rather than three points because they've got the head-to-head. Yeah. yeah, honestly, it's it's difficult because we have to... Uh, there's not only one team. There's We have to pass two teams. Uh, Juventus, obviously, is not in a great run, but, you know, there's not only Juventus, unfortunately. And, and Napoli is playing uh, uh, playing well. Probably it, it's the best team there with with Atalanta. So I think it's really hard. And obviously things didn't go as Lazio hoped because I think we all were hoping to see a draw. Uh, Juventus Milan instead. Juventus was awful, and Milan got these three points. I think Milan now it's safe, right? Milan is in the Champions League, and so it, there's only one spot available now. I'm not convinced. No, I, I don't think anyone's quite safe yet. I still think that, yeah, uh, Napoli and Atalanta will get there, and and Milan probably should do riding off the momentum of, of last night. And they were good last night, but it's it's hard to always trace how good a team is when they're playing this Juventus team because they're yeah. absolutely terrible. Um, how about this question though? I mean, if Lazio win the derby and end up fifth and can finish ahead of Juventus, for example, is that is that a good season still? Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say good, but an okay season. I would be fine with that, especially if you win both Derby. But it wouldn't be a season that I would say, yeah, that year was amazing. Even because we didn't win nothing, right? Yeah, I, I guess because the top four was the objective, right? So anything less than the top four, you can't really be too over the moon about. But um, but yeah, it's not a disaster either, is it? I think finishing in the top five in Serie A would be a, a good a good accomplishment. Not a great one. Not one we're going to sing songs about and write books about. But it's uh, I, I, I feel like almost as well 
because of the season we've had and the fact that Lazio have essentially not really convinced us. I can't remember any point of this season where we've been, yeah. you know, really impressed. Uh, there have been individual games and moments, but I don't think there's been any more consistent run in this season where we've thought this team is playing at the level they did last year when they went on that run, for example. So I think in, in that context, actually, the way they've played this season, finishing fifth, would be pretty good. Alasa, thinking that there's the derby this weekend and we have to play Parma on Wednesday, would you rotate the players against Parma, knowing that if you beat Parma, you're in Europe League, but there's the derby afterwards? We have Leiva and uh, Andre Anderson suspended, but we have other important players that are a yellow card away from the suspension. So, would you rotate players against Parma or or not go for the win and uh, secure the position? Well, Parma seems to be the one team that Marici likes playing against. So, <laughs> I mean, his only goal was against Parma, wasn't it? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's an opportunity to do that because probably not too much, not rotating the entire 11 players, but But, you know, it would be nice to have Strakosha back in goals. It'd be nice. It was nice to see Luis Felipe back, even though um, it was at a fairly chaotic part of the match against Fiorentina. But I'd like to see him back in the team again. Escalante, I think, is, is coming back to fitness again now. Um, so, yeah, I think there's opportunities to give a few games to some players who would, um, who would otherwise not be starting because Parma are, Parma are done. You know, they're, they're already yeah. relegated and... Um, they're not one of these teams who appear to be you know, relieved of pressure once they're relegated and start winning games. So, um, yeah, it's an opportunity. And I th I, the Rome Derby is a huge one because for both teams, I guess, it could be a position where it's, it would be a good way to finish a disappointing season. Obviously, Roma's season has been more disappointing, but um, for both teams, it'll be, I think, I think still a pretty big deal, um, even though it's, it doesn't mean much or it might not mean much in the league standings it's you know it's it's a way of kind of celebrating the end of the season in a proper way i don't know i don't think it's going to be a big deal especially for roma they have really little to take and even if the what win i mean uh, they lost three nil the, the the first one so and on the other side at least imagine how bad it would have been to say goodbye to the champions league losing at the derby so At least we don't have this problem this year. Uh, do you think Inzaghi is going to rotate the players? Because uh, we said it a lot of time in, in this year, this season, and he never did. So I'm not convinced that he's going to do it for Parma. Uh, he's going to say, this: if we win against Parma, we are qualified for the Europe League. I'm playing the best players. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's... Well, I don't know. I mean, it's there's what four games left, but there there are four games in the next two weeks, so you do need to be a little bit careful. I know it's coming to the end of the season and so on, but you don't want to just destroy everyone and and kind of make them exhausted before the, especially before the Euros start. And a few of these players will probably be wanting to to stay fresh for that. The last thing we want is for players to be getting picked in every match when they would actually rather be getting given a bit of rest before the Euros, and they end up running less than they should, <laughs> that kind of situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this, the answer is always the same as in Avita. I mean, you never, you never expect Inzaghi to rotate because he doesn't do it very often, apart from when he knows that the opposition aren't in the city. <laughs> 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 at which point he'll play three goalkeepers and Marucci uh, at left back or whatever it was. I'm still disappointed, disappointed he didn't put Parolo in, in goal. He had... Uh, that that would have been terrific. Yeah, but um, yeah, I I I agree. Uh, the only thing is, Luis Albert uh, Miniko Savic probably is not going to play. He had surgery today. He should be able to play with the derby with a mask. I, I, we had a lot of players playing with that, so it shouldn't be a problem. But I don't think he's going to be ready for Wednesday. So Miniko should be out. The problem is Pereira is out as well. So I think Akpa Pro will start as usual. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think even with the subs, with the with rotating the players, Lazio should be able to beat Parma. They should, yeah, really. Um, 
yeah, like you say, it's uh, it's it's a relegated team. It's not a very good team, and their well, their form is just a sea of red. <laughs> if you look at their their form book, I mean, it's what it's, uh, six matches in a row now they've lost and they've conceded ten in the last three. So um, they're not exactly on fire. Put it that way. Yeah. Um, Alasso, there's another important thing that we have to mention. Sal- Salernitana won and, uh, against Pescara 3 nil, and so they are promoted in Serie A. And I guess everybody knows it, but if you don't, Salernitana uh, is the other team of Claudio Lotito. And with the law in Serie A, you cannot have be the owner of two teams playing the same division. Uh, I know they're changing the rule so that uh, you won't be able to buy, have property of more than one team. Uh, in depending on which division there are, but Lotito will be forced to sell Salernitana. He cannot sell it to his brother, son, or parent. He has to find a buyer. Or sell Lazio, obviously. Yeah, I think it's probably safe to assume it will be Salernitana that he's looking to sell. <laughs> um It's yeah, it's an interesting situation, isn't it? I mean, I I, I know a Salernitana fan here, and uh, remember it, talking to him about the fact that there is just this kind of suspicion ever since um, Lotito has been there that they're not really getting necessarily the investment that they need or or the transfer that they need to be competitive to go up because he can't let them go up. Um, so it is interesting to be in this position um, and to see them in the league for the first time. I think 98-99 was their last season in, in Serie A. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's a bit of a mad situation to end up in, really, because he's got 30 days. You would have thought that he might have thought about this before now rather than waiting for this to actually be confirmed. Um, I did read an article on uh, Calcio Finanza just before we came on, which I, I kind of skim read because this was confirmed about five minutes before we started recording. But they they did seem to say that, you know, although the companies that uh, own different sections of Salernitana aren't actually listed in Lotito's name, that's not going to help him. So it, it's not essentially there's no way of him working around it by saying, oh, it's my son who owns... 40% share here and this other company that I own has got this share. I think he is going to essentially have to withdraw himself from responsibility for the club. How do you see it going? Yeah, well, I think he already have an idea or someone already ready to buy the, 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 the club because, you know, he has 30 days from the beginning of the season. So he has more than 30 days, to be honest. But, you know, selling up a, a club in 60 days is not very easy. So I, I have to think, I have to think that he already has something in plan or, or a buyer ready to, to, to buy the team. Because, I mean, Lotito is not stupid. So uh, I think he has already something in mind. But the most interesting part of this is... What will happen to Lazio players on loan in, Saler- in Salerno? Because today Casasola scored, he's a Lazio player on loan. Uh, Andre Anderson scored the first goal, again, he's a uh, Lazio player. Uh, we have King there, who started this match, didn't play great, honestly. Uh, Adamonis is a Lazio player, he's the second goalkeeper. He played a couple of matches this season. So, what will happen? Because we know that Lazio is paying Salernitana to send these players there. Uh, I think a lot of things will change. Yeah, there's there's loads of them. It's amazing if you. I'm just looking at their squad list here, yep. and it's all of them on loan. Riza Dermizi, I completely forgot he'd ended up there. <laughs> um, Gijek, uh, Gondo, Chicharelli. Yep. I mean, wow, it's it's an incredible number of players. Lombard. I guess that's that's because they've had this this model, I guess, where they've been able to say. Um, You know, they are officially Lazio players, but um, to all intents and purposes, they're essentially signings for Salernitana. Um, yeah, exactly. So what do you do with that? And then if the, all those players are being sent back to Lazio um, for, what is, um, for what is a summer where we've already mentioned, Iglitari's got a hell of a lot of work to do to refresh this squad, to move players on, to find buyers for guys who are out of form or too old or not in plans or something. If 
Salernitana suddenly send all these guys back and have no interest in continuing their relationship with Lazio under new ownership of taking on all these players all the time. Um, or if they probably quite rightly think a lot of them aren't good enough for Serie A, then that's, you know, another, what, 12, 10 players or something that Tari is going to have to find clubs for. And it's been very, we know very well by now how much this route has been used by Tari and by the club so far of, OK, well, we've got a player here. Dermizi is a great example. He's not getting in the team. We can't find anyone who wants to sign him. So let's just send him down to Salernitana because we don't know what else to do. Yeah, I think Matri will help with that. Uh, otherwise, why did we sign Matri as a help for Iglitare? So, uh, yes, Lazio has a lot of players to decide what to do this summer. And it's going to be a very important summer. So we're going to see what happens. I think the next couple of months will be very interesting on that side to learn. Hey, who knows? Maybe Lotito have to, has someone ready to buy Lazio and he keeps Salernitana. Who we, You never know. But yeah, there's a lot of players that, that uh, Lazio has to find a way, a solution this summer. Um, other thing about Lazio, Lazio women are back in Serie A. They won yeah. the Derby and now they are promoted. Yeah, it's great news. Um, it's been nice to see, I think, over the last uh, few years that the, the the attention on women's football in Italy has really improved, I think, and the coverage has improved, uh, probably on the back of the World Cup. I think that always helps as well. And, um, yeah, the Serie A fe Femminile is, is pretty decent standard now, and it'll be good to get them in there and, and see. I mean, when you say the derby, it's not, not the proper derby, so... Be nice to have a proper derby next year. <laughs> uh, well, I was reading that this team has the rights for Roma, right? The, the official Roma team has lost it. I, I don't know. It's something a little bit complicated. Oh, uh, right. It's like Lazio. Lotito built another Lazio team, and they bought out the rights of the name from the older team that is now in, like, in, uh, in fifth, sixth division. So, you know, there's a little bit complicated things going on there. But... One thing important is we have Carolina Morace, who is was probably one of the best, if not the best, Italian player uh, ever. Lazio captain, won the Scudetto with Lazio twice, if I'm not wrong, and uh, is considered a great manager. She she applied for the Scottish job, Alistair. Yeah. And she didn't get it. She was quite upset. That was impressive knowledge, Vittorio. Um yeah, yeah, no, you're right. Uh, and it was, and I think in, in that regard, you know, it was, it was considered a bit of a coup when when Lazio got her last year. Obviously, you've got the emotional connection and and like you say, the history and so on. But um, I think for for Lazio Lazio's women's team being in Serie B to get someone of her um, standing to come in and, and coach the team was uh, was quite impressive. And clearly, it's worked because she's immediately taken them up to Serie A. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's I don't don't think the morals of the story should always be say no to Scotland, but um, in this case, it's <laughs> always, <worse. laughs> especially when you're talking about football, always. <laughs> anyway, Alistair, I think we can wrap it up here if you don't have any stats to talk about us. Otherwise, no, no, not today, I'm afraid. Okay, we're gonna focus on Parma. We need three three points, and hopefully we can. Do you think it's unrealistic to see Stakosha start? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> In short, <laughs> yeah, sweet and short. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna see the start eleven we saw against Fiorentina, probably against Parma. But yep. Absolutely. Short week for us because there's Parma Lazio. We're going to be back after that match. And then there's another match that they, they say uh, this week. And uh, don't know if it's important or not, but we're going to cover even that one. Uh, guys, as always, you can listen and follow us on Spreaker, Spotify, iTunes, uh, Alexa. And if you like the podcast, you can become a member at patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. It's everything for today. We're going to catch up after uh, Parma Lazio. Lazio Parma. Thank you, Alasdair. Cheers.